Hi guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, and as you can see, a few binoculars as well. Alright guys, so here it goes. As the title of the video implies, today we are looking at binoculars. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I've been looking forward to making this video for a while. Um, I've had this uh, um, 100 millimeter pair of binoculars made by Orion for a while already. Uh, recently I was talking to Saibon, I kind of talked them into sending me a pair of their 50 millimeter ED binoculars. So I just wanted to give you guys my quick thoughts on what I thought about using these for astronomy uh, use in particular. And I'll touch a little bit on using these, you know, just in general in the field. Now before we get started with the binoculars, I know you guys are all thinking the same thing. What is this chair? Some of you might have seen these back in the day in Sky and Telescope catalogs. I honestly don't even know the uh, company that made these, uh, but I picked this up a couple of years ago. It kind of had a couple of... Uh, electronical griffins that I finally sorted out so I had the chance to use this thing um, not for the first time but for the first real time um, a couple of nights ago so anyhow let's get uh, let's get out to the binoculars you know we'll kind of start talking about those guys all right so you know for astronomy use they make binoculars in a wide you know variety of ranges um, without getting you know into astronomical prices uh, this is actually a pretty good you know range of you know what the average guy can afford so these are 50 millimeter binoculars. These are made by Saibon. Um, and then these are 100 degree, or not 100, 100 millimeter binoculars that are made by Orion. Uh, magnification on these is fixed. It's 25 uh, X. It's also fixed on these. And it is uh, 10 X. Uh, field of view wise, uh, we'll kind of get into it a little bit later because that is actually a really important distinction between these two guys. All right, so overall, I'll kind of talk about these binoculars real quick. Everything that I you know, say pretty much about these is gonna be similar with these guys, and I'll mention any differences, you know, like as we kind of go on. All right, first and foremost, uh, multi-coated optics on the, uh, both of these guys. As you can see, very nice on the Saibon. They kind of have that magenta type of color. The Orions have uh, more of like a green cast. Uh, from what I could tell, these are, you know, the Saibons here, they are like a deeper color coating. So usually that means that they're probably better multi-coated than the Orions. The Orions, you know, I can kind of see the glass a lot better. It's not really showing up on camera too well, but um, these, you know, the magenta coatings do look a little bit better. The Saibons, um, as, the, as it says, you know, here they, uh, they do use an ED glass for the front element, which gives you better color correction with them. Um, you know, while we're kind of on, on that subject, I will say that, you know, in using these, uh, you know, for night types, type of sky stuff or, you know, observing um, uh, like deep sky objects, you really can't tell too much of a difference. So the ED glass, I think it's kind of more important during the day, realistically. Um, all right. So moving on. Overall body construction on these, these are kind of made of like a kind of a harder rubberized plastic. Um, these aren't too grippy, like this grip texture on here is pretty nice, I do like that. I wish that the plastic that they use was a little bit more grippy though, it's, it's a little slick for me. Um, they do come with the shoulder straps, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they do have um, eye cups that are adjustable and they do have a click in position so that they're both the same length. Uh, eye relief on these is very long. I mean, uh, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, I'm kind of anti eye cups. With these, I actually did use them with the eye cups up to the first position. You can actually click them out another position. For me, the first position was awesome and they work, you know, really well. So I do like that. Uh, focusing mechanism is very smooth, it's, you know, very similar um, on the Orion unit, although with this one, you do have two individual focusing knobs for uh, each individual eyepiece. Uh, with this guy, if you wanted to adjust the focus on, uh, you know, on one of your eyes individually, you have an adjustment on this eye, which would be the right eye. Um, so basically, you'd essentially focus with, you know, this guy with, the, you know, the main focuser. And if you need to make an adjustment, if the, both of them are quite sharp, you can, you know, you could adjust that. And that works really well. Prism wise, these use the BAK4 prisms. Actually, both of these do. 
Excellent prisms. I've actually reviewed uh, Orion's uh, Bino viewers for a telescope with the same prisms and they did work very well. I was pleased with them and you know similar results on the binoculars. Alrighty guys, well with the kind of quick overview of the overall layout on features of these guys, let's take a step outside and we'll kind of see my thoughts about how these perform under the night sky. Alrighty guys, welcome outside. So, if this is an original content, I don't know what is. So, comparing a relatively inexpensive 50mm binocular to a top-of-the-line imaging APO. Now, I know, I know, it's kind of crazy. This is, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's an FSQ-106 Takahashi. It's uh, pretty widely regarded as one of the best, you know, imaging platforms out there. That is kind of going to be its primary role, but it also happens to be an awesome, awesome wide field scope. So anyway, I just kind of give, wanted to give you guys my quick thoughts like on um, kind of the differences in the view. Now I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. The view is better on each individual object through this, you know, four inch apple. Um, but the binoculars, you know, I, I'm pretty impressed. They actually give you a nice sharp view. Uh, these are, you know, light enough to where I could hand hold them pretty comfortably even pointing up or, you know, kind of like wherever in the sky, especially if I'm sitting down. I do find that if I'm sitting, it's a lot nicer. <clears throat> like I said, uh, the view, like let's say, if, you know, I'll talk about M45 specifically, uh, the Pleiades star cluster, it is better through the Apo. I could definitely start to see the nebulosity around the Seven Sisters and that type of deal. Just in general, um, it's just better presented. Uh, this scope is giving me about a four and a half degree field of view. Uh, the binoculars are wider. Uh, they look, I, I'm gonna, you know, post in the calculation of what the field of view is with these. It looks, you know, closer to probably like, I don't know, like seven, eight degrees with these. So anyhow, um, I'll see you guys back inside and we'll kind of talk more about, you know, what I thought about the performance of these guys and, you know, kind of maybe a little bit more of the comparison of what I thought with the scope. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, so as you saw, the first night that I was out, I was actually comparing these binoculars to my uh, white field refractor, the FSK 106 uh, Apo. Uh, which is a quadruplet. Um, actually, you know, I didn't get any footage from the second night out. Interestingly enough, we had two nights that were clear uh, in a row in the northwest here. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> so the second night, I actually had this whole chair, you know, gizmo out, and I had my FSQ again, and I had these guys out. Um, there was supposed to be some cloud cover moving in, so I really didn't record any footage because I only had like two or three hours to observe, so I was just kind of trying to optimize my time. Uh, but let me kind of give you, you know, a rundown of what I thought about, you know, like the view through uh, these guys. Let's get into you know the meat of the review. How do these actually perform under the night sky? The 50 millimeters versus the 100 millimeters versus my four inch apple wide field uh, refractor. So I'll kind of start with the you know field of views that they give you. Uh, the 50 millimeter uh, binoculars they give you about a 6.1 degree field of view, which is absolutely excellent. Very wide, very comfortable to use. Uh, these 100 uh, millimeter binoculars give you a 2.5 degree field of view, which is moderately wide, but kind of on the narrower side. My FSK 106 gave me about a four and a half degree field of view with the 25 millimeter 100 degree field of view eyepiece that I was using. So basically, I kind of had, you know, essentially this was kind of like my high power instrument that night. This was my low power, and the FSK was kind of my medium power as far as, you know, where you could actually fit into the field of view. Uh, so what I'll say is, is that the 100 uh, millimeter binoculars at the 25X, they are actually kind of more similar to a lower to mid power telescope. You know, the views that they provide are actually, you know, you'd be surprised. I mean, these aren't like even the ED versions or anything. Very nice views. I mean, stars are nice and sharp. Contrast is really good with them. I didn't really see anything wrong with the view. Besides that, I felt that it was narrow. I mean, for using binoculars, I mean, you're not really getting that really wide field experience, unfortunately, with these. Now, the other thing that I'll say, you know, while I'm on the topic of the 100 uh, millimeter binoculars, I mean, you don't have to have this whole crazy, you know, chair set up, you could get like a parallelogram type of mount for it, or even like a heavy duty tripod, you know, will work, you know, decently well. It'd have to be really high. I mean, think about it. if you're standing, it'd have to be like this high for you to use them realistically, probably even higher. So, um, a dedicated mount for these is a must. I mean, unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger's lawn in Lost Cousin, you're not going to be doing this. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, so moving on here. 
So what did I think about the view with the 50 millimeter binoculars? You know, guys, I'll be honest with you. I've kind of been a binocular snob to where, you know, like I like binoculars, but I, I really don't use them too much for astronomy use. Um, but when I asked, uh, you know, Saibon to, you know, send me these, right, I kind of challenged myself to actually see what I could see with a pair of 50, milli 50 millimeter binoculars. And I was actually pretty impressed. Like all of the brighter, messier objects that I pointed these to, you could see very easily with. I mean, you didn't have to have the giant binoculars. You know, these show them plenty bright enough. And now I do live, you know, under a semi-dark sky size, so that does definitely help. Um, but the other thing that, you know, I really, really like, you know, about these compared to these guys, or even the FSQ-106, which has a fairly wide field of view, is that since you are hand-holding these, right, you could point these and kind of scan the sky really quickly. So I actually really, really enjoy that. The example uh, that I'll give you is, you know, I was looking at some deep sky objects in Auriga, like all the open clusters, like M37. Uh, that goes into, I think, like M36 and M38 out there. And, you know, just kind of scanning that whole sky, you can really, you know, easily and quickly compare all the cluster sizes, you know, kind of how they're laid out, which is really impossible to do with, you know, the bigger binoculars or the FSQ, which was, you know, EQ mounted on an, uh, on an equatorial mount. Now, performance on these guys, uh, contrast was excellent. Stars were pinpoint sharp. I did not see any type of secondary color on anything. Besides, you know, I did have to point it at uh, Sirius and it did show like a very minor amount of secondary couple color a little bit of purple around it the most you know optical things will show it on that star it's very very bright um, but really on anything else including uh, all the other bright stars that i looked at i saw zero anything that, you know wrong with the field of view i very very comfortable to use pair i actually really enjoy these i do like you know the weight of them the feel of them in your arm and your hands so yeah that was really nice all right in conclusion and like i said in the clip you know from outside from the first night does a telescope show you like will a four and chapo show you more than these guys it definitely will. It shows you more than both of these guys. But you know, I like I said, I kind of challenged myself to use even the 50 millimeter binoculars, and I was actually kind of surprised at how much detail you could pull out. I mean, hand holding them, there, you know, you do kind of get a little bit of shake there. There is no binocular mount on the, or not binocular. There is no tripod mount on this. Uh, one of the pictures that I've seen from Saibon's marketing kind of show these on the tripod. I don't know if they sell an accessories or accessory or something to do that, but these, you know, like you can't mount these on the chart there's no mount there you know just directly on them so you know that's something to consider so i mean there is a little bit more vibration but you actually you know it's really cool to be able to scan the sky so i am actually going to challenge myself for the future star parties that are going to be happening you know this year for 2023 i'm actually going to bring these guys along and uh so basically i'm going to have my dob as my you know kind of main scope uh for higher powers i'm going to have my fs key for wide fields um and then this is going to be kind of my ultra high wide field, you know, just scanning the sky and kind of getting a sense for, you know, for, you know, like where objects are kind of in reference to other stuff. So really, really cool. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys found this video interesting and informative. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please, again, do consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.